Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. This is Sam I.B. DeGange with The Media Speaks, giving you political commentary and news on science and news on all kinds of things. Friends, thank you very much for tuning in. I do want to say a lot of you are probably not used uh, used to seeing The Media Speaks going live on, uh, The Correct Views, I should say, going live on The Media Speaks. That's because some idiot named Jaeger gave us a, a strike on our account for legally quoting his article. If we could have afforded an attorney, we'd have proved it. Basically, we talked about his article, and he struck the account because it, uh, he claimed that we paid, plagiarized it. We didn't plagiarize it. You can, you can go back and look at it. It's, uh, it. We were talking about his video. But in any event, the it used to be that the live show was posted on the correct views and the HDEF was posted there. That has since been flipped due to a uh, Jaeger jerk. So uh, HD over there, low def, you're live, you're right here, media speaks. This is from Infowars.com. FCC refuses to testify before Congress ahead of the internet takeover. I've heard both sides of this. There are people saying, Sam, this is going to be a remarkable idea because this prevents Google from showing Yahoo News commentary before they show your news commentary. It gives you even footing. That sounds a lot to me like if you like your health insurance, you can keep it. The last time the government uh, took something over, I lost my health insurance. Friends, this is not going to be good. This is putting the government in charge of the internet. And they're going to be calling everything terrorism. If you do commentary about ISIS, they're going to say that you were supporting ISIS because you showed videos of a beheading. This is going to be miserable. Democrats listening, I can talk to you very easily here. Let's pretend that your hero Obama is no longer in office. Let's pretend, God, please let it only be pretend, that Jeb Bush gets in office. Do you trust Jeb Bush of the George Bush family? Do you trust Bush with this much power because this isn't just going to do this for Obama if you happen to like him. I do not. This is not going to just happen during his administration. This is going to change the, the nature of the internet for good and I think it's a very bad idea. It says Federal Communications Commission Chairman Tom Wheeler is refusing to appear before Congress as the FCC prepares a regulatory internet takeover. Can anybody tell me in my comment lines how in seven hells that's even legal? Not only that, but Wheeler has also referred to publicity releases of FCC's 332-page drafts of the internet regulations. So long as the chairman continues to insist on secrecy, we will continue calling for more transparency and accountability at the commission. House Representative Jason, Jason Staffitz of Utah and uh, Fred Upton of Michigan said in a statement, Chairman Wheeler and the FCC are not above Congress. Well, they seem, why aren't they in prison then? What happens to you listening to this? You. What happens if you don't testify to Congress? The other thing is, and this can't be overstressed, it's becoming more and more apparent to anybody paying any attention here that every time the government gets our hands on something, it's always more expensive. This is going to lead to that as well. It says the FCC is expected to vote on new regulations Thursday, uh, that would be in mere hours, which would allow the agency to expand government control over the internet such as regulating service providers like a public utility. Do you trust the federal government to make the internet ecosystem more vibrant than it is today? FCC Commissioner Ajit Paise stated, there's a link for it, and uh, he broke rank to oppose the proposed regulations. God bless him. Can you think of any any, any regulatory regulated utility like the electric company or water company that is as innovative as the internet. In other words, it's going to shut down progress on the internet. This is not something that's going to go ahead and lend itself to being helpful. 
And remember, why are they hiding everything that has anything to do with it at all? If it was such a wonderful thing, then they would let you read what was going in it. How is it that everyone uses the internet, whether they're doing research for a show or looking up porn, or both? How is it that everyone uses the internet, and yet somehow, magically, you're not even allowed to know what's in it, and there's virtually no outcry? This worries me to no end, and it, it leads into the next story here from a Gallup by Jeff Clifton. The big lie: five to six percent unemployment, five point six percent unemployment, and it says we will quit wondering what hollowed out the middle class. I remember, and there's a part in this about the American dream, which is why I'm saying it um, before you just watch me read into the camera. Um, I remember being in my early 20s, I want to say 22, 24-ish, writing a song called The American Dream. And it basically said that there wasn't an American dream, that, that it was a lie. And now that I'm older, I'd have to say that I was completely right. I've never seen anything in my life that it resembles the American dream. There was never an opportunity for, go, for me to go to college because I wasn't rich enough to afford it, and I wasn't poor enough to have it given to me. So uh, I took it years later. I, I, I didn't graduate from college till I was 35. I went so very late. Um, they've outsourced all the jobs. What I went to school for isn't even done in this country anymore. Internet design, uh, graphics, that kind of thing. Uh, video editing. There, there isn't anything to look forward to. You, 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 you can't get anywhere in music because the same 50 people own all the media. And they're looking to dumb down the country. That's why a band like Animals for Leaders isn't a household name, but a talentless hack like Jay-Z is. And it's, it's working. I mean, people are so stupid now that they can't even tell that their internet is being dumbed down and uh, turned into a propaganda tool, potentially, by their own government. It says, here's something that many Americans, including some of the smartest and mo most educated among us, don't know. The official unemployment rate, as reported by the U.S. Department of Labor, is extremely misleading. Right now, we're hearing a lot of celebrating from the media, the White House, and Wall Street about how unemployment is down to 5.6%. The cheerleading for this number is deafening. The media loves a comeback story, and the White House wants to score political points, and Wall Street would like to stay in the market. But none of them will tell you this. If you, a family member, or anyone is unemployed and has subsequently given up on finding a job, that means uh, you looked and looked and looked and just couldn't find one. If you are so hopelessly out of work that you've stopped looking over the past four weeks, the Department of Labor doesn't count you as unemployed. That's right. While you are as unemployed as one can possibly be, and tragically may never find work again, you are not counted in the figure that we see relentlessly on the news, currently 5.6%. Right now it goes on as many as 30 million Americans are either out of work or severely underemployed. Trust me, the vast majority of them aren't throwing parties to toast falling, unemplo falling unemployment. Let me ask you this though. How can you decide just not to look for work? How do you eat if you do that? So, I mean, at some point, what, they just got lazy and quit looking? I mean, I'd have to say that they uh, they should count in the unemployment, but they're really not the most, uh, they're not the backbone of the country, I guess I'll say. It says, and there's another reason why the official rate is misleading. Uh, say you're an out-of-work engineer or healthcare worker or construction worker or a retail manager. If you perform a minimum of one hour of work in a week and are paid at least $20, maybe someone pays you to mow their lawn, you are not officially counted as unemployed in the much-reported 5.6%. So, and few Americans know that. And again, um, I can see it. I work in the entertainment industry. I'm a DJ. And uh, numbers are going down, people. Numbers are going down. And they try to do stuff. They try to you know, change the music. So they take music away that people want to hear to have us play music that nobody wants to hear but they think they want to hear because it's on the radio. So, uh, yeah, it, it, and they don't want to look at the writing on the wall, which is the country's headed for a financial collapse. It says another figure of importance that doesn't get much press. 
those working part-time but wanting full-time work, if you have a degree in chemistry or math, and you are working 10 hours part-time because it is all that you can find, in other words, you are severely underemployed, the government isn't counting you either. Um, there is no jobs in chemistry and math in this country. What are you talking about? Maybe if you're a math genius, otherwise no. That's all, that's all outsourced. You ain't going to get a job in that field. It says there's no other way to say this. The official unemployment rate, which cruelly overlooks the suffering of the long-term and often permanently unemployed, as well as the desperately underemployed, amounts to a big lie. And I love this quote. Please stop what you're doing. Put your texting down. Shut off Kesha. She sucks. Leave her off. Listen to this. It says it's a big lie and it has consequences because the great American dream is to have a good job. And in a recent years, America has failed to deliver that dream to more and more people than any time in recent memory. A good job is an individual's primary identity. It's their very self-worth, their dignity. It establishes the relationship they have with their friends, community, and country. When we fail to deliver a good job that fits a citizen's talents, training, and experience, we are failing the great American dream. God bless. God bless that author. Every word of that is true. And that is why I tell people, if you feel like you've been cheated in life, don't let people tell you you haven't been cheated. You have been. And it's not me saying, oh, I'm being cheated in my life, poor Sam. No, uh, uh, uh. it's a lot worse than that. Most of us have been terribly cheated. We are not, our talents mean nothing. Our training and our experience mean nothing. We have been outsourced and sold out, and conglomerates have taken the arts and destroyed them. It says, Gallup defines a good job as 30 hours a week for an organization that provides a regular paycheck. Fortunately, I do have that. Uh, right now, the U.S. is delivering at a staggeringly low rate of 44%, which is the number of full-time jobs as a percent of the adult population 18 years and older. We need to be at 50% and a bare minimum of 10 million new jobs to replenish America's middle class. Guess what? We don't have it. So, friends, um, that's the truth on the, uh, the American dream. If somebody ever says, every man is responsible for where he is in life based on the things he's done, hit them in the face. It's a lie. Now, I'm not saying those, I'm not doing the Obama thing here. I'm not saying that you didn't build that. I'm saying that you probably didn't have a chance to build that. Uh, Steve Watson, Infowars, sickos, uh, set up fundraiser for cop who paralyzed grandfather. This is insane. This makes me sick. And I'm going to let you know why it makes me sick on a, uh, uh, a universal level and why it makes me sick on a personal level. Uh, leave a comment on this. Be the first man to comment on this section and uh, promote your favorite charity next show. Steve Watson, Infowars, a cop who has been fired and now faces third-degree assault charges after brutally paralyzing a 74-year-old man has received support from an online campaign that has already raised over $3,000. In a bizarre turn of events, an, Ind an Indiegogo campaign has been set up by broke... <laughs> by bro, by pro police off supporters of Eric Parker of Madison, Alabama. Yeah, you'll be broke after you donate. Parker was named as the Madison officer who slammed Shurab Shibhay Patel to the ground last week, causing severe injuries and leaving the family traumatized. They messed up his spine. We, we, we reported on this. It says, the cops set upon Patel, a grandfather visiting his family from India, merely because he was walking around the neighborhood and someone decided that he was suspicious. When he was unable to effectively communicate in English, the officer immediately resorted to brute force. And this is the story I gave you about the man who gave his son's phone number before they pummeled him. The videos show Parker grabbing Mr. Patel's arm, and twisting it behind his back, and sweeping out from under his feet, underneath, uh, sweeping his feet out from underneath him, leaving him no way to break his fall. 
The description of the fundraiser simply reads, quote, This fund is to support our friend. Any donation is greatly appreciated. Or you might as well do to the, donate to the Nazi party while you're at it. It says a large text picture along with the campaign reads, I support Officer Parker, featuring a blue line running over the word officer. Over 43 individual boneheads, uh, donations, excuse me, have been made to the campaign, ranging from $1 to 1000 Presumably, the donations were made by people who either have not watched the video footage or who, sim who simply will support the police no matter what the circumstances are. Uh, the campaign has been shared over 600 times on Facebook and has a month-long goal of 10 grand. Clearly, those who are supporting the officer in this instance have not, sh not a shred of humanity in them, or they are just plain ignorant. Thankfully, a campaign to raise funds for Mr. Patel, and there's a link to that, who faces medical bills of a quarter of a million dollars for walking down the street, has already raised over $171,000. Hank Sher, the family lawyer, has stated that uh, Sherrish Bay is improving faster than expected. His grip strength is improving, though he can't yet handle small objects like a spoon. His legs are improving too, particularly his right leg. The doctors attribute the improvement to Mr. Patel's hard work and motivation, he said in a statement. Um, he's being transferred to a rehabilitation center. So basically, the cop asked a man, he was legally here, we, like, we've covered this, look it up in the other posting. Um, they took a man who was allowed to be here legally, visiting his son, who was a very successful, contributing member of society. And they, 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 tra they trashed him, is what they did, because he didn't speak English quick enough when they asked him some questions while he was walking down the street. First of all, Unless he's being detained, he doesn't have to answer your questions. That's fact. Second of all, you, you can't make the argument where he needs to learn the language or get out. He was visiting. It makes me sick. And I'll tell you what makes me sick on a personal level. Um, my band, Passing Time, is trying to raise a $1,000 on Kickstarter. Please help me if you can. I would appreciate it. Look up Passing Time Kickstarter. How to Make Good Music Matter is what it's listed under. Um, where we got like $900 to go. Nobody in this band has ever beaten anybody, paralyzed anybody. We've never been discriminatory towards anybody. We're asking for a grand. If the cop can raise three grand, that's, the, that's why. That's why you have the kind of entertainment that you have. Because when good entertainment is out there, there's boneheads out there funding police to beat a man for nothing. Please help if you can. Uh, NewsEveryday.com, and this is wonderful news coming off of that last story. Some wonderful news is needed. Coffee cuts cancer. Four cups of Joe a day linked to less endometrial tumors. This is some of the best news I've ever reported on, and uh, here it comes. Ladies, indulge in your favorite cuppa, for it offers protection against endometrial cancer. A new study found that four cups of coffee a day can cut the risk by 18%, CBS News reported. Researchers made their findings after evaluating dietary associations of 84 foods and endometrial cancer, which kills 10,000 women annually in the U.S. when they found that coffee intake is immensely associated with risk of cancer. Inversely, excuse me, inversely associated. The new study led by Imperial College of London, a researcher Melissa Merritt evaluated dietary habits of 2,800 women diagnosed with endometrial cancer. Oh, Pop-ups, don't you love them? According to WebMD, the new study is not the first of its kind. It says studies in the past have shown a similar association. One, tri one trial found that consuming 37 ounces of coffee reduced the risk by 18%, while another one claimed 26 ounces was sufficient to produce similar risk reduction. While the new study's researchers admitted that they were not surprised with the results of their study as past trials have produced similar results, they are far from explaining the relationship between endometrial cancer and coffee. Well, I'm not. 
We've reported on here the number of antioxidants that are in coffee. We've reported here how it keeps the kidneys uh, very flush. Does anybody will tell you uh, you can have white urine in no time at all, which means, of course, fully hydrated. Uh, coffee. You're going to want to drink more than coffee because it will dehydrate you to some degree because of the coffee and the amount of urine, uh, the caffeine and urinating that you're going to do. But uh, it's, I can tell you exactly why, the antioxidant count. One theory goes that coffee can help reduce estrogen levels in the body, which can uh, lower the risk for certain kinds of cancers. Basically, it's four cups, and they found that it's also dark roast coffee tends to be the, uh, the, the more healthy of the, of the uh, coffees studied. So basically, the darker coffee, the better it is. Good news for anybody that, you know, enjoys coffee. It says, our findings suggest that coffee intake may be inadversely associated with cancer. Um, that is up from people who even drink water. And I thought that that was actually excellent because you always hear people say, you should just drink water. Christelle is always trying to get me to just drink water. Well, compared to water, cancer is uh, going down when you mix it with coffee. Good, good. You like coffee, fight cancer. Like, it, it's, it's like getting good news about chocolate or something. You, you can't hear too much of it. And again, you can overdo a good thing too. It said four cups, not four pots. Friends, you're listening to the correct views. I want to invite you before I get to my last three stories to check out the work here at 421 in the morning of Mike McLaughlin. You can find his work on Facebook.com. He spelled M-A-C, then laugh, L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N, Mike McLaughlin. He's a writer, he's a poet, and he's very, very good. So make sure you get a hold of him. Tell him you heard about it from The Correct Views, and be prepared to read some of the uh, best fiction. And I think he's venturing into nonfiction now that you've ever read. Moving on, this here is from Infowars.com. It's by Steve Watson and David Knight, brought to you by Change Transportation. If you're within about a 50-mile radius of Canton, Ohio, make sure you uh, call your local cabs, call whoever, get a price, and then call Change Transportation. You can find them on Facebook. He'll do price matching. In a, a former CIA and NSA head, after 911, the U.S. Constitution is a movable feast. He admits surveillance purposefully targets ordinary Americans. Therefore, your God given right to the Fourth Amendment, illegal searches and seizures, the, the right that God gave you can be trumped because Hayden knows better than God. That's what it says? In a recent speech, former head of Egghead of the NSA and CIA, Michael Hayden, suggested that following the 9-11 attacks, he reinterpreted the U.S. Constitution and started to do things different without the authorization of Congress or the President. You know, well, you know what, some people after reading about how ancient Rome, uh, how, uh, how the, it went from a uh, democracy to a dictatorship, some of them, upon reading it, decided that they were going to reinterpret it and uh, that we need a king. You can reinterpret anything. That doesn't mean you're right. Speaking at Washington and Lee University last week, Hayden effectively said that he was able to rewrite the Constitution based on his own mature judgment of what is right and wrong. Well, I feel so much better. Egghead has our back. He specifically noted that. In his own mind, at least, Fourth Amendment protections are now open to interpretation. So, yeah, it's a God-given right, but it's open to interpretation. It says, um, The Atlantic meant, uh, has this story up, noting, In a speech at Washington and Lee University, Michael Hayden, uh, former head of CIA and NSA, Opinion on signals intelligence under the Constitution, arguing that the Fourth Amendment forbids a change after September 11th of 01. He noted the, quote, reasonable search and seizure, end quote, is prohibited under the Constitution, but cast it as a living document with reasonableness determined by the totality of circumstances in which we find ourselves in history. That is a way of saying that because terrorism happened once, there's a really, really good chance that we need to get rid of what the Constitution has always stood for. 
We need to tell God that he doesn't know how to give rights, and you need to trust us to protect you from terrorists, which we usually fund. He explained that the NSA is, as the NSA's leader tactics he found unreasonable on September 10th, though one struck him as reasonable the next day, as roughly 3,000 people were killed. Uh, 3,000 people, that's, you know, 3,000 people die so you can completely trash the rights that they were born with and that people died for, according to him. I actually started to do different things, he said, and I didn't need to ask Mother May I from Congress or the President or anyone else. It was within my charter, as God, I guess, in terms of the mature judgment about what's reasonable and what's not reasonable. The death of 3,000 countrymen kind of took me in the direction over here. Well, if that's the case, then maybe you should have told NORAD not to stand down. Perhaps terrorists should take note. If you keep attacking the U.S., the people in charge, like Hayden, uh, the author writes, will keep systematically breaking down what were previously considered inalienable, that means can't get around them, freedoms, until they are completely gone. Thus you, Mr. Terrorists, win. Within the same twisted speech, Hayden also casually noted that since 9-11, the NSA has not only been spying on and monitoring bad guys, but also anyone it considers interesting. I'm not a law enforcement officer. I don't suspect anybody, Hayden said, adding, I am simply going out there to retrieve information that helps my countrymen free and safe. Or even if it was keeping us safe, I don't see how that keeps us free. You would be doing the opposite of keeping us free. Someone needs to buy him a dictionary. This is not about guilt. In fact, let me be clear. The NSA does not listen to bad people. The NSA listens to interesting people. People who are communicating information. Well, if you're talking on a phone, you're communicating information. So that means the Fourth Amendment applies to no one. Thank you, Mr. Hayden. So much for the age-old jurisdiction that if you have nothing to hide, then you have nothing to fear. General Hayden, of course, has a track record of trashing the Constitution in what brought him into the NSA's gig in the first place. He was a man who seriously argued a decade ago that there was no mention of probable cause in the Fourth Amendment, insisting that only reasonable search and seizure was required to violate the privacy of Americans. He also contends that the government's secrecy is akin to an individual private privacy, and so the American public should not be privy to the actions of the NSA. In other words, they spy on you, you don't spy on them. Hayden also dubbed Ed Snowden, who was a hero of mine, worse than the American traitor ever, including Benedict Arnold, for blowing the whistle on government spying, and described Guardian journalist Glenn Grant. Glenn Greenwald, who broke the Snowden story as a co-conspirator. He said that he would like to see them both added to the government kill list. Well, maybe we'd like to see you added to the government prison rules. How's that? I'd like to see you in a federal prison for the things you've done to this country, you piece of human filth. Blogs.discovermagazine.com. Two more stories to get to. Um, I always do news from the science front. Saturday, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Media Speaks. Sometimes I end up with more science than I can get to, so I will toss a story or two in. Uh, there is one in tonight's before we get to the dumdy, which is next, and it's this one. Carl Engel Engelking, scientists have mapped all of Otzi, the Iceman's 61 tattoos. Um, the reason they give for the tattoo, I'd have to say, sounds pretty blockheaded, but this is still an interesting story. Proving the tattoos can age well, that's good to hear. All 61 tattoos of the mummified Otzi, the Iceman, have been mapped, and they still look pretty darn good, all things considered. <clears throat> Anthropologists mapped the ink of the 5,300-year-old remains using a new imaging technique revealing previously unknown tattoos. With the new census in hand, researchers hope to finally answer the question of what the tattoos mean. Ancient ink. In September of 1991, so I guess they've made this a priority, two tourists discovered the Iceman's remains nestled into the glacier in the Italian Alps. Since then, researchers have rigorously analyzed the Iceman to paint a picture of what life was like during the start of the Bronze Age, 5,300 years ago. We know that he suffered from a variety of degenerative ailments and ultimately died from an arrow wound to the shoulder However, his peculiar horizontal line tattoos are still a formidable riddle to solve. 
It says early studies initially detected 49 to 57 tattoos, eventually raising up to 59. The tallies varied over time because his tattoos are difficult to spot. For one, the guy is 5,300 years old and his skin is understandably weathered and browned. On top of that, it says his tattoos were likely applied by punk.